one day in the Washington Post on a Sunday, on the Sunday comics, I looked and I saw that Lincoln had drawn Big Nate drawing uh, his own comic and he was holding a sticker sheet and on that sticker sheet were three cartoon characters, Bart Simpson, Garfield, and Igdoof. So this was a huge day in my life. It was a huge day for me because now all of a sudden I was a published cartoonist. You know, my cartoon character, even though he was only one square centimeter, had appeared in the Washington Post. And so I kept up by cartooning in college. I tried to get better and better. And eventually I got the attention of the Washington Post myself. So here's a picture of me at age 22 looking very cocky and pleased with myself because the Washington Post told me that Igdoof was going to become the next big thing in comics. So I graduated from college with a criminal justice degree and I started sending out Igdoof submission packets to cartoon syndicates. Now cartoon syndicates, they're the ones who decide if your comic is going to get published or not. So I sent it out there, expecting to get embraced uh, and loved, but instead I was rejected. So I have lots and lots of rejection letters. In fact, this went on for about three years. I put together a submission packet for about six months, and then I get lots of rejection letters back. And you can see it's very cold. This one says, Dear Creator. So it didn't even have my name on it. It was very, very discouraging. In the meantime, I needed to have a job, so I needed to work. So I got lots of different jobs. I started off as a newspaper designer, so I did graphics, headlines, I worked in Photoshop. Eventually I became a medical software engineer, and then I started designing online educational games for a website called Funbrain. So you can see I was starting to get a little bit closer to cartooning, but I still wasn't there. And one day I was thinking, I was mowing my lawn and thinking, and I came up with this idea for an online virtual world. And that became Poptropica. Poptropica is a website for kids, and it's been my day job ever since. And in fact, it's still my day job, even now. So along the way somewhere, I realized that my dream of becoming a newspaper cartoonist wasn't going to happen. And there were two reasons for that. One was because newspapers were shrinking. Most major cities had two or even three big newspapers. And now most major cities have just one. So I saw that my opportunities were drying up. And the other reason was because I knew I just wasn't good enough. My art wasn't good enough. I thought my writing was pretty strong, but I couldn't draw the way professionals did. So I realized I was going to have to kind of give up on that dream. And so I said, I still want to be a cartoonist. So I came up with an idea that I would start drawing, I would masquerade as a kid drawing cartoons. And I'd sneak my cartoons into books. So that's where Diary of a Wimpy Kid came from. Once I got the idea, I started writing down my idea. I started writing down jokes. I started collecting jokes. Everything I could think of that was funny that happened to me as a kid, I started writing these ideas down in a blank sketchbook. And I said, I'm gonna fill up this sketchbook first, and then I'll start on my first draft. So here was one of the pages of the sketchbook. And as time went on, I started drawing smaller and smaller. I think I was really worried that I was gonna to get to the finish line too quickly and I wasn't going to have enough good material. But by the very end, it was really crazy and it looked like this. So that was my very last idea page, which took me four months. It took me four years to fill up that sketchbook. And then I started on the first draft officially and that took me another four years. So eight years working on Diary of a Wimpy Kid. When I was finally finished with my first draft, which was 1,300 pages long, I brought it to a convention just like this one. It was called New York Comic Con, and here's what it looks like. Actually, this is what it looked like then. Now it's a lot more crowded. You wouldn't even be able to see the carpet, really, because there are so many people there. And I walked it around to the different booths. I walked my sample pack of about 12 pages around to different booths, and I tried to show it to people, and I said, would you like to see this thing I've been working on? And everybody said, no, we, you know, we don't want to see what you're working on. You know, it's too busy here. It's not the right place. So eventually I found somebody named Charlie Kochman who worked for a company called Abrams. And I said, would you like to see what I'm working on? And he said, sure, I'll take a look. And he took a look at just the first page and he didn't read a word of it. And he said, this is exactly what we're looking for. So after all that time, three years of getting rejected, 
and then eight years of working on my first draft, I finally had success. So now, flash forward all these years later, it's about seven or eight years later now, and I have eight books out. In fact, the ninth just came out the other day. And it's very exciting for me. You know, this wasn't the dream I pursued, but now I'm a published children's author. It's a different dream than the one I set out with. And now when I work on a new book, I start from scratch. I've sort of exhausted everything in those sketch pad pages. So I always start a new book in January, which is coming up quick. This is what it looks like in January where I live, in Plainville, Massachusetts. And from what I understand, this is what it looks like here too. And in fact, it looks like this in January, February, March, April, and May now where I live. Uh, so I always start in January and I have zero ideas. And I know that I need about 350 good ideas to write a book. So I had these wood blocks made with numbers painted on them. And I put them above my office uh, door. So every time I walk into my office, I can see what number I'm on. And it motivates me to go forward. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when I'm working on a book because it's very exciting. This is what it looks like. It looks like me sitting around a lot. And I have this video game rocker. The reason I got it was because I figured if I had something that's sort of slightly uncomfortable, I wouldn't fall asleep. But it happens anyway. I do most of my writing reclining. In fact, most of the ideas for the Diary of Wimpy Kid books came from this couch right here. And I lay around a lot, and I'm one of these guys that gets distracted very easily. I always found it really hard to pay attention to teachers in class, so I have to block out sights and sounds. And so I do that with a blanket, actually. So this is what it looks like to my family. And they come into the room, and I tell them I'm working, and they don't really believe me. In fact, sometimes my wife will ask me to do something like, say, take out the trash, and I'll have to tell her that, sorry, I'm working. So this is my life at home for about six months. Uh, this year, for the first time ever, I went away to write. I've never tried that before. And I went away by myself. I told my wife, I'm going to Puerto Rico in the middle of February. You know, good luck with the snow. But I'm going to Puerto Rico. So this was me reclining in Puerto Rico. And it was great. I, didn't, I thought I was going to come back empty-handed with a suntan. But I actually came up with a lot of ideas for the new book. Uh, sitting there looking out over the ocean. So sometimes being a writer can be a lot of fun. 